What's going on guys? Nate here. Uh, had a lot of questions about running shoe recommendations. So uh, I'm about 30 minutes into my run. I thought what a better time to talk about this. And um, yeah, sorry for the shaky camera, but I'm going to keep running. Maybe I'll walk at some points. But uh, so starting out, uh, first of all, Hopefully none of my followers still believe this nonsense, but obviously running is not bad for your joints. We know that. And um, if you do know somebody who still believes that, maybe share this with them, break that belief. And we'll talk about a little bit why about that first. And um, starting out, how you doing? Starting out talking about running first of all it's not the act of running that's bad for your joints it's how you do it right it's what shoes you're wearing it's how you're running your form your technique or lack thereof so it's not the it's not the act of running I mean we've been running for at least two million years heard upwards of three million now and we've been doing it to survive right How you doing? so clearly obviously running is not bad for your health it just depends on how you do it if you're wearing quote-unquote running shoes that were invented in the 70s maybe that's bad for your joints if you're always running on concrete maybe that's bad for your joints but if you're But if you're running with proper form, proper shoes, or lack, or without shoes barefoot, and in the proper environments, you know, in nature, then it's probably, it's definitely not gonna be bad for your joints. What's going on, Scott? What's happening, homie? So, just to get that out of the way, and I'll say it again for the people in the back. The people who didn't hear running, it's not bad for your joints. Now let's talk about my running shoe recommendations and how to run to make sure it's actually doing you more good than harm. So, as you may know, I'm a Zero Shoes affiliate, so it's exactly what I wear, all Zero Shoes. And the reason I wear them is because they're minimalist, they're zero heel drop, they're wide toe box, and they allow your foot to function properly, right? It doesn't change the shape of your foot or your gait. Your gait, for those who don't know, is your running posture, your walking posture, your locomotion posture, the patterns your body moves through when locomoting, that's going to be your gait. And since zero shoes are zero heel drop, wide toe box, and uh, really flexible, you mean you can roll pretty much all of them up into a ball, even the boots. So they're flexible. They allow your foot to move naturally, right? So, and excuse me if I have to, uh, it's not rocket at some point, you know. I'm still running here. And uh man's gotta do what a man's gonna do, right? So excuse me one sec. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> That's the uh warrior archetype in case you're wondering. Man's gotta do what a man's gonna do. Anyways, back to running. So zero shoes, I'm 100 percent zero shoes team and I'll be honest I've ran in every single zero shoe I have whether that's the boots the winter boots the waterproof boots the sandals the casual wear shoes you know all of them I've ran in all of them and it's possible because they're minimalist shoes so I know that's uh, not the answer you're looking for but 
to answer your question more directly, if you're asking what shoes can I run in for longer distance and on cement, or because a lot of people are surrounded by cement. So what kind of shoes can I wear for that? And what I'm wearing now is the Speed Force. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn the camera around. These are the Speed Force. Okay. And these are the thinnest shoes they have. <laughs> the most minimalist shoes they have. And so these are my go-to wearing for running. And I wouldn't recommend most people start out with these if they've never ran barefoot or in minimalist shoes before. What's going on guys, welcome. I wouldn't recommend you start out with these because they're so minimal. But if you're more advanced, if you've been doing this for a while, these are great go-tos. And if you do start out with these, I'd recommend you start out real slow. Start out with just walking and running really short distances, way shorter, maybe a tenth of what you normally do, and then slowly progress from there. Now the other shoe I've heard great reviews about, great things about, and a few people I talked to went on to buy and actually really like are the HFS by Zero Shoes. I'm gonna walk for a little bit, catch my breath. That was a good 40 minutes or so. So HFS are another good recommendation and they have a little bit more thickness to them, just a little bit, not much. They're still very minimalist. And uh, it might be a better starting point for some people. So Speed Force for more advanced or slowly progressing into. And HFS might be a better place to start for most people if you've never done this before. And slowly build up to it because you gotta think about it. If you've been wearing regular shoes your whole life, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, that's 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your body adjusting to this one shape, which is usually heel elevation, which is usually crunched toes, which is usually stiff, you know, immo immovable, not flexible. So your body's adjusted to this. And that's probably why, that is why most people have bad knees, bad hips, bad backs, because they're wearing these shod shoes. It's like wearing a cast on your foot, you know? What happens to your arm when you wear a cast? You know, your arm gets weak, it shrinks, the muscles stop being used, and we all know the principle of use it or lose it. So if you don't use your body, the way it's designed, the way it's evolved for two to three million years or more, you're going to have some weaknesses, some fragilities, you know. Your body's going to be maladapted, as we say. So take time to progress, you know. Don't just jump right into it. Don't just, you know, go balls to the wall on day one. You're used to running five miles, so you throw on your first pair of minimalist shoes and run five miles, guess what? You're going to be sore, if not injured, for at least a week. If you're just sore, I'd give it at least a week or two. And I'm um, speaking from experience, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, when I first started, maybe, what was it now? Eight, ten years ago, something like that. Maybe eight years ago. When I started this um, barefoot shoe journey, this minimalist shoe journey, I uh, I had a go hung attitude about it. I went balls to the wall. I ran, you know, a couple miles in the heat, in the summer heat, and uh, I was out for a good two weeks. I couldn't walk for a good two weeks properly, you know, super sore. And uh, I'm gonna walk backwards so you can see my face. I was talking about that too after this. <laughs> I was seeing people's faces. Um, so 
So yeah, progress real slow into it. Take your time, don't rush. It's not a race, you know? It's gonna take some time, just like anything else, you know? You don't go to your gym the first day. Say, say you got a goal to bench press 400 pounds. You don't go there in the first day and bench press 400 pounds. I mean, that's a kind of silly goal anyways. It's not super practical, but you, you get the idea. You start, you start with lower weight and you progress your way up to it, just like anything else. So that's the idea of progressing. And uh, just keep that in mind when you're getting these barefoot minimalist shoes. So those are my two main recommendations. Uh, Speed Force or the HFS by Zero Shoes. I got a link in my bio. Uh, it's in my affiliate link, so check them out. And uh, let me know what you think when you get them. I've uh, heard nothing but good reviews by all the people who uh, I recommended the HFS to or got the HFS uh, shoes through me and the Speed Force as well. I can't recommend them enough. If you're um, a sandal wearing person, if you love wearing sandals, I don't love it too much. Uh, it kind of depends on the shape of them. The ones that go through the big toe and the middle toe, they uh, really irritate that, that, that skin in the middle. So I generally don't wear the ones that go in between the big and the, the big toe and the next toe. Um, but if you're fine with that, they have the Veracruz, which actually is a little bit different. It just loops around the big toe, which works a lot better for me, uh, which I don't mind. And also the Z trails. I can wear those. I run, I run in those pretty often too, especially in the summertime. So if you're a sandal wearing person, check out the Veracruz or the Z Trail. And um, another one I like when I'm trail running is the Mesa Trails. I'll wear those on the trails. Those are good, super good grip. And uh, same thing with all zero shoes, super minimalist and uh, super flexible, all that. So those are my top. I'll call that my top five recommendations. The uh, Speed Force, the HFS, the Z Trail, the Veracruz for the sandal wearers, and the Mesa Trail uh, for trail running with a little bit more uh, heavy duty bottoms with a little more grip on the bottoms. Um, yeah, so if you want super minimalist, go with the Speed Force and uh, the same goes for the other ones, depending on what you're looking for. All right, so I hope that answers your question. Those are my top five recommendations. Now, I got a few recommendations for how to run, where to run, and all that. Um, so, you know, if you've been around here for a while, you know I'm a moving app master trainer. I've been doing moving app for about eight years now, seven, eight years, and we teach efficient movement, right? So moving that's all about efficient movement. I'm gonna go ahead and run again. So efficient movement, not just being effective, right? Not just being able to do the jump or the run, but being able to do efficiently conserving energy. You'll notice this whole time I've been breathing through my nose. It just shows that I'm doing efficiently. I'm not huffing and puffing. I'm not breathing crazy. You know, being efficient, and that's the goal, right? Being efficient with your movement. So some key principles to do that is, so now that you have the barefoot shoe thing down, a key principle is to use your foot properly because when you wear those heeled shoes, those high heel shoes, essentially, you're changing the, sh the shape of your foot again. So every time you land, your foot's not landing like this, it's landing like this, right? And that's changing the shape of your knees, your hips, your back. This is what causes knee, hip, and back problems. So just getting the shoes down is gonna be a huge step. And running barefoot is another huge step. So that's a little more advanced. That takes time to, you know, not only get the muscles down, the form down as we talked about before, but it also takes a lot of callusing, you know, it's not, not getting hurt from stepping on sticks or rocks or anything like that. Strengthening the bottom of your feet. So there's a whole nother, there's a whole nother adaptation there to doing barefoot versus minimalist shoe, right? So number one, I already said, breathe through your nose. 
as soon as you stop breathing through your nose, slow down, walk, you know, take time to adapt, keep your movement efficient, control your breath. This keeps your movement efficient. Once you start breathing through the mouth, your whole nervous system changes, your whole physiology changes. It turns into a fight or flight response, which is fine for a short period of time. You know, if you need to sprint away from a tiger, a dog, some danger, whatever, you're gonna need to do that. And that's all right for a short period of time. But when you're talking about these longer runs, keep it through the nose. This is what's gonna keep it efficient. Number two is your posture. Just real simply, there's a lot, there's, there's, um, there's a cue for every part of the body from the feet to the knees, to the hips, to the you know chest, to the arms and the hands and the head and the neck. You know, there, there's, there's cues up the whole kinetic chain. But to keep it real simple, just keep a really tall posture. I see runners all the time like this, hunched over, right? Rounded back, head forward. Um, and this is disastrous, you know? This is, this is why people will think running's bad for you because they're running with horrible form. And um, it's this crazy thing. I think it was Kelly Starrett who said it first. Uh, like once you learn biomechanics and natural movement and the, the functions of the body, this weird thing happens where everywhere you look, you see broken people. <laughs> everywhere I look, I see broken people. And it's, it's sad, but at the same time, it's just, uh, it goes back to what I talked about in my previous post about how profoundly sick our society is today. Uh, we're so disconnected from ourselves, from our environment, from our tribe, from everything and everyone. So it goes deep, right? About reconnecting, reconnecting with your body, reconnecting with yourself. And uh, that's what movement's all about. And um, yeah, just went deep there. So keep a tall posture, keep your nose open keep breathing through your nose and um, once you wear the barefoot minimalist shoes your foot will start to reshape and get stronger you start building new muscles in your feet and everything up pain your feet is your foundation so start there and uh, walking is a great place to build it up and also strengthen it and um, yeah that's a great place to start building your foundation so that's, that's how to run. Now where to run, you may have noticed, you know, I'm, I'm at a park right now. I'm gonna go ahead and run some more. I'm at a park right now and I'm running on mostly grass, right? So this is ideal, right? It's a little softer surface, especially when you're adapting. And um, it's a great place to build up the strength and build your foundation without injuring yourself. Now, if you want to correct your form in an instant, you know, we people, the worst common mistakes besides the posture that I talked about, the head forward, the rounded back, is heel striking. So people going, boom, here, and running with their heel forward. And they can do that because they have these thick cushions on their heels that absorb the impact. So they don't feel it, the immediate pain, but that eventually sends shock waves up the knees, up the back you know, up the hips. So these shock waves eventually do damage to the whole body, starting with the feet. So running barefoot fixes that immediately, especially on harder surfaces, because you're not gonna heel strike with your barefoot heel on cement. Does that make sense? You know, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna get immediate feedback. So that's just another thing to think about. Is that immediate feedback, right? I'm gonna run backwards so I can face the sun. So, that's an immediate feedback tool, but you're not gonna wanna start there uh, for long distance, because again, you need to build your foundations. So as I said, running on softer surfaces, sand, dirt, mud, grass, you know, these natural surfaces on trails, this is going to allow you to build your 
strength up first before going longer distances. If you have to run on cement, if you have no choice, then it's gonna be a matter of starting slow with shorter distances and slowly progressing, increasing the time and the distance. Now I'm gonna show you a little shift when we get up here that you can do pretty much anywhere. Even if you live you know, in suburbia, wherever. I'm gonna show you a little shift when I get up to the more cement areas and the tra trailways. So, tall posture, breathing through the nose, not heel striking, I'm landing on the balls of the foot, the midfoot area, and just letting the heels kiss the ground softly. Keep breathing. So now, if you are in a park or something, an area like that, I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see. A lot of times, all it takes is a little shift, a two millimeter shift, not just a mindset shift, but maybe a two meter physical shift, just going to the side, boom. And now you're running on a more, a more natural surface. Hey, dude. So, that little shift can be all the difference. You know, if you're running at a park and you feel like you have no option but to run on the cement trail or the road, sometimes all it takes is just moving two meters to the left or to the right. Now you're running on a more natural surface. So that's one mindset and one physical shift to keep in mind. All right, so I think we covered all our bases. I covered my shoe recommendations. I covered how to run, where to run. So we got, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm sure I'd answer them. What's going on, guys? Welcome. If you have any questions, let me know. On running, on forum, on shoes, on anything like that. So again, check out those zero shoes. The link's in my bio or in the comments below if you're on Facebook in the original post. And if you are new and you've got your minimal shoes and you're ready to learn how to run, learn all the cues for proper form because it's much more than just those three I gave you. You could spend all day talking about running form cues then check out uh, Moving Out Online Coaching, where I can coach you through your running form and all other movement forms for efficiency. And if you're in Denver, hit me up. We can do some private sessions on your running form or any other movement forms. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Share it with a friend who thinks running is bad for you. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a message. And I'll answer them as soon as I can. All right, guys. Oh, one other thing. If you're a man and you're outside and the sun's shining, take your shirt off. Get some sit damn sun on your chest. <laughs> and if you've seen my stories the past couple of days, then you know getting sun on your chest and then going home to a little private area and get some sun on your balls <laughs> that's gonna be a huge boost to your manliness to your testosterone woman you can do this too to a lesser degree maybe but uh yeah boost that testosterone be more human the sun is not your enemy running is not your enemy nature is not your enemy get outside run Soak up the views, soak up the fresh air, soak up the sun. Man, man up, woman, woman up. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Made a motto, out.